What is going on you stallions and stallionettes? AK40 Kevin here in the gamer heaven. Today we're looking at an ultra durable working man's phone. This thing is basically made out of sheer titanium lined with Kevlar. This phone specifically designed for men that shave with a straight razor and your truck has to run on whiskey and beard oil. Now using this phone will increase your tea count by about 2% and put an extra two inches on your peen as well. So if you eat and beat your meat raw, this phone might be for you guys. Without further ado, let's go. Alrighty guys, over here at the Stormtrooper PC, if you are new to the channel, this is where we do our unboxings and whatnot, and welcome aboard. So this is the King Kong CS, which I'm assuming stands for Cold Steel, which is what the frame of this bad boy is pressed out of. The screen is made out of six-time Gorilla Glass. You can basically unload on it with an AK-47 from close range, and you'll be good to go. So, popping into this bad boy here, you have your actual device right here. You have a thank you letter with uh, some very manly... Uh, pastel flowers on here. Nothing screams Gorilla God Stallion like some beautiful teal and turquoise flowers, boys. That should be that should be a given. Putting your finger in the hole here just to the knuckle, you're gonna pull this thing open and you are gonna have a little gel packet. Save that for a snack for later. Just kidding, don't let your kids or dogs eat this. They will die, so throw that securely in the trash there. You have a Charger brick, so they're already one step above Apple. They actually include a uh, charger brick, so that's nice. You have a very short, I'd say about a four foot micro USB cables. So you're not getting USB-C or anything like that, which you probably wouldn't expect that. This phone retails for, I believe, $100. So very inexpensive phone. It does run on the Android 10 operating system. This is a very basic cable. It's not braided or microfiber or anything like that. You are gonna have a SIM popper tool as this is an unlocked phone that you can... Oh, that's that's weird. I was gonna say it's broken because there's no like actual uh, shaft or tip to it here. It's just like a guitar pick as where it's supposed to have like a little needle on the end that you can pop open your SIM tray. But maybe this is the way the phone's designed. I do also have a bunch of other SIM poppers as I have done unboxings and reviews of cellular devices on this channel here. You have your warranty information. Uh, you have your Declaration of Independence or your EU Declaration of Conformity. I don't know what you're conforming to. Oh, okay. Standards of Safety, Health, and Durability. Cool. Uh, you have your compliance regulations here. So some real serious stuff for a cell phone here. You have to basically understand that with this phone comes a... Uh, with this phone comes a four-year term of service to the armed forces. So very nice, very nice. All right, nice instruction manual, black and red. All right, so it has a bunch of other languages in here. You have Egyptian hieroglyphics, you have some kind of Da Vinci code, but you do also have uh, English, which is my primary tongue, ladies, if you know what I mean. Um, so it goes over the basics of the phone here. This is a very basic instruction manual, very small font, no color or anything, but they do have pictures in here. Um, for somebody like myself with a very low IQ, we like to see pictures. It helps to guide us through the setup process. One of the coolest things about this phone is you can actually use dual SIMs and a TF card. So if you want to make yourself a little bit more anom anonymous, you're uh, out there on a forward deployed mission or something like that, you want to switch SIM cards to ping off of different satellites or make your uh, MZ and, and your EMEI and MZ or, or uh, basically an ID code for your phone a little bit more mixed up like a VPN, you can do that, um, which is pretty cool. So the phone itself is extremely heavy. Uh, good thing I've been hitting the weights or I, I wouldn't be able to pick this thing up off the desk, guys. So slipping the condom off as we have already done what we need to do with this thing. Um, yeah, this thing is freaking heavy. Let's get this thing on the scale because it has been skipping no meals. All right, so we got this bad boy zeroed out. Let's go uh, in grams. Yep, 247 grams on the dot. So not a light phone by any means, but you would expect it to be a little bit uh, girthy and, and durable because of what it's designed for. So you have a 5-inch IPS HD display on here. It is, a, it is a 720p display, much like the Razer Moto E that I reviewed. However, that really didn't look too bad. Unless you got really close to it or you were doing some kind of mobile gaming, the 720 never really seemed to hinder it. Uh, this is on a 3G network, so that's not great. We're on like 9G now, so 3G is a little bit behind the, uh, the power curve. This only has 2 gigabytes of RAM, so for an Android phone, that is uh, not very much. And it has 16 gigs of st onboard storage, so that's not very good. There is an expandable port for a 
SD card, which I would recommend doing. This is, runs on the Android 10 Go Edition operating system. The rear camera is a 13 megapixel and the front or selfie cam, uh, as you're probably gonna wanna take selfies of your luscious beard, you, it is uh, eight megapixels. Now the battery is a lithium ion and it is ranked at 4,400 milliamp hours. So that's not overwhelmingly good, but it's also not like charge it every day bad. The CPU or processor in this bad boy is a MT6580 quad core. And it runs again, like I said, with a, a dual SIM card setup. So that's pretty interesting. Go ahead and peel off this protective film there. Damn. So this thing just looks rugged as shit. So I'm assuming that's what that tool is for, is these little these little screws right here, these flathead screws. I don't know why you couldn't just use like a flathead screwdriver or whatnot, but man, uh, this thing looks insane. This thing is a thick boy. It is girthy and has been skipping no meals. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I'm assuming this is the power button right here on the side. All right, she's booting up. Cubot, powered by Android Go Edition. So the Go Edition is kind of a stripped down version that doesn't have all the flagship features as the upper end Android operating systems. But for a basic phone like this, that the person that's probably gonna buy this phone, you might be a construction worker, you might be a, a, a lumberjack or something, you probably don't give two dams or three fucks about you know, having the top of the line phone. You just want something that's durable. You can, uh, you know, you might be on the job site and it slips out of your hand or something. That probably did more damage to my desk than the phone because this thing weighs about the same as the cinder block that knocked Debo out on Friday. So yeah, this thing is a, is, is a real beast. All right, yeah, so your typical Android setup here, you're gonna select your language, you're gonna connect to a mobile device. So I'm gonna connect to my, uh, my network here. It says if you have SIM cards, insert them now. We're gonna go ahead and skip on that just for now. We will be installing my SIM card into this in a bit, but for now, go ahead and skip on that. All right, damn, that's good internet. That is my home network. Let's go ahead and enter the password for it. You boys need not worry about what that is. So you get a nice satisfying ta uh, haptic feedback or vibration when you're typing on this. Uh, which feels really good, feels really responsive. All right, so the way you install a SIM card and or micro SD card into the Cubot King Kong CS here is kind of stupid in my opinion, compared to every other phone that has a traditional SIM tool that has a little spike on it. You press a little tray on the side or bottom and it pops out and then you drop in your cards. This one actually has a back plate here, which has two screws, which you could potentially lose. And they also, you have to screw them for quite a while to get them backed out all the way to get them out. And then you have these little trays in here, which you do need to push down to unlock them. Then they flip up. It's just much more complicated and several more steps than you would want from having to put in a SIM card. And so you flip them up like that. Here, let me bring you guys kind of over my shoulder a little bit so you can get a, a glimpse at the goods, so to speak. You pop the tray off, then you gotta push this up and there's a little tray and you can have two sims in here again not 110 percent sure why you would want to or need to but you you, you 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 can if you want to and then you need to set your sim in there just right to where it doesn't get lost in there and it also doesn't break the fucking sim card i think this is a very very stupid design all right and then you're gonna lock it in place Come on. There we go. This is just so many more steps and it feels like it's really probably not great for your SIM card either. All right there, fellas. So we have run into a bit of a crossroads here, i.e. the road ends here for the uh, Cubot CS or Cold Steel. Now, I was actually pretty excited to test this phone. It seems pretty cool because it's an ultra durable model. You can, you know, supposedly run it over with your car and whatnot. I, I, I am very skeptical over stuff like that. It's like those Tupperware salesmen that want to come in your house and unload a Glock mag into a, a Tupperware and be like, see, see? Anyway, um, <laughs> this has been stuck on this screen for three days now. So I, I originally was linking up just via Wi-Fi. I was gonna wait to put my SIM card in there because I was using my daily phone and whatnot. So I was just hooked up via my Wi-Fi network. Then even when I put my SIM card in there, I tried both slots. It wouldn't recognize the SIM card. So I've been stuck on this. I have tried resetting the phone completely to its factory reset mode. Uh, nothing, I've tried starting it in safe mode. Absolutely nothing. So pretty goddamn disappointing. Not to mention, I didn't really have very high hopes for this phone anyway, even if we did get it up and running. 
because of the price point and the fact that the majority of that money is probably going into the materials to make it durable. So things like the processor, it is on Android 10, but the very, very weak Snapdragon CPU or processor in there, it has two gigs of RAM. It wasn't gonna be a very uh, powerful consumer phone or anything like that, but I just wanted to see what this bad boy could do. Uh, maybe take it out back and strap a frag grenade to it or something. Not that I have a, a, a you know, a, a grenade box in my house or anything like that. Maybe we could make a little concoction in the kitchen or something. That'd be a fun tutorial for the kids. But yeah, this is a, yeah, I mean, made in China too. So, you know, you, you, you see that and you automatically associate that with high quality electronics. So I don't know, guys, I don't know. So I finally got the sucker up and running over here by doing some crazy technological finagling and uh, stuff that the average person that buys a phone would never ever ever want to do to get their phone working. But I wanted to see the performance of this phone. So there is no fingerprint scanner or face scanner, which, which even like $120 Androids like the Moto E that I reviewed on this channel typically uh, have. So you're gonna be punching in your code old school. So think about that, you're on a job site or something like that, you got some gloves on or something like that. Maybe you're a mechanic, you got some oily gloves on, you just wanna scan your face real quick to, you know, fucking Darlene's calling you or something, you can't do it because you gotta, you gotta touch on the screen there. So this has some serious, serious, serious issues I'm gonna talk about right now. First of all, the screen is at maximum brightness right now, as you can see, and it is not very bright. Granted, I do have uh, a key light back there, but still, like, this is, screen brightness is measured in meets or PPI. You can tell this is extremely low. It's, it's, it's not very bright at all. So if you're out in the actual sunlight, natural sunlight, that's an issue. Also, just trying to navigate this thing, it takes several seconds to load and switch applications, and then it will actually, there were several times where it would skip and glitch across the screen when I'm trying to browse it. Like right now, it's actually relatively smooth, but man, with that two gigs of RAM, and I don't know what kind of RAM optimization they're running in here, but it would just start skipping and glitching, and it kind of reminded me of like a uh, like a early 2000s phone when touch phones kind of started becoming a thing and you know Android was kind of just just coming out and iPhone was starting to do their thing and touch phones were still pretty bad that's why a lot of people still had like flip phones or the sidekicks that you know flipped up with the screen that had a QWERTY keyboard on it and stuff and um, that's exactly what this feels like this feels like a 18 or 19 year old phone and that's crazy because for this price point, for $100, there are so many other phones out there that are an actual viable option. And I feel like having to mess around with settings and stuff like that, the average dude or chick that gets this phone probably just wants a durable phone that has a decent camera, good battery life, and you know, this thing doesn't have that. Like just from sitting around my house for three days trying to install the updates, the battery life's at 12%. You know, that's with zero screen time or anything like that. The operating operating system super chunky and glitchy and buggy. Uh, the I took a couple pictures with the camera. I'm not even going to upload them into my PC and have them on screen like I usually do with phone reviews, just because they were they were really really bad, guys. So I I mean, damn. Well, I will be reviewing a lot of real phones in 2021. So iPhones, Androids, Google phones. Sony phones, Samsungs, etc. So subscribe if you want to see some phone reviews that I can actually complete because the fucking thing actually works. And I gotta say, the little bit that I did see of the phone, I was not a fan of. The fact that you have to sit here and unscrew for 30 seconds to get this off, then risk losing these screws to put in your two SIM cards, which don't even register anyways. The screen size is incredibly small in comparison to these massive bezels or bezels on there. Yeah, guys, it, 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 it's a bust. I personally can't recommend this to anybody. In fact, you'd probably be better off getting yourself a flip phone or a pager at this point. All right, guys, have a good day. Peace.